Hi, it's Jeffrey Langloy, Langloy's Vital Nutrition Center here in Brookfield, Wisconsin. Our mission is to help you improve your health naturally. And uh, this is part of the, the, the gut-brain connection. And if you want to heal your brain, you've got to heal your gut, okay? So uh, stage one, and we talked last in the last video about the Heal Your Gut cookbook. And the, um, this is a great cookbook based on gut and psychology syndrome, which is based on the famous landmark research by the Dr. Haas's in the 50s about how to use food to heal your gut, which I am sure, though I can't prove it, that uh, the drug companies made sure that uh, the doctors were not taught this in medical school. So um, anyway, it works. So right out of this cookbook here, stage one, the first thing that you're going to be doing in the next month or so is eating a lot of soup. Why do we want to eat a lot of soup? Because the protein in soup is very easy to digest and absorb. So when it's properly prepared, it provides an exceptionally easy to digest and nourishing meal that begins to heal your gut wall. The proteins in meat stock are partially broken down, giving your body a chance to rest while reaping the benefits of the stock's healing power. Having this also removes most fiber from your diet, again, allowing your digestive tract time to heal. Many people assume that fiber is actually a required nutrient and it is not. You can live without fiber. It is not a required nutrient. Americans use it because their gut bacteria is so unhealthy, so they use it to create a bowel movement. But if you actually look up in a uh, biology, um, physiology, science type book, you will see that there is no requirement for fiber. It doesn't actually nourish your body. It just sweeps your colon, which good bacteria will do. When you have good bacteria, you will have a good bowel movement. Okay, so you will have options for what type of soup you will eat, but you will feel like you are eating dinner for breakfast, dinner for lunch, and dinner for dinner. You'll basically be throwing out all the food rules that you are used to, and you maybe have the exact same thing for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The only reason breakfast, people seem to think of breakfast as cereal and toast and juice and coffee is because the food companies have programmed you to think that way. Okay, try to prepare ahead of time. Always keep some soup on hand in the freezer. I always like to keep a meat stock. In, a lot of times now I buy it. For 10 years I made my own meat stocks and my own soups, but now you can buy some very high quality. Realize they sell uh, beef stocks in those, those square boxes. What you want to see when you buy a meat stock is you want to see gelatin. You want to see it jiggle like jello. Okay, well, if it's watery, um, it might be like a bone broth, but it's probably very diluted and watered down. So you want to see it jiggle. Um, I would suggest making big batches of any of the three soups that are going to be listed here. I'm recommending three basic soups here, a chicken soup a butternut squash soup, and a crock pot beef soup. You'll have a beef soup, a chicken soup, and a butternut squash soup. You can have a spoonful of honey in between for a treat or some kind of coconut dish. You want to make sure that, you, you, well, you'll see in the recipes that there's animal fat always included. One of the biggest deficiencies in the United States is the fat-soluble vitamins. Realize that ancient people consumed about 10 times the level of vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, and vitamin K, only found in animal fats, okay? Not found in olive oil, not found in coconut oil, but found in animal fats. Now, some of you, you're, that you cannot digest animal fat and you don't feel good on it, and I understand that, or it clogs up your liver and Maybe you think it raises your cholesterol, but realize it's sugar that raises your bad cholesterol and eating cholesterol 
will not raise your bad cholesterol. Anyway, that's a whole separate video. Um, when you start eating more soups, the bad bacteria are going to start to die off. And sometimes you will feel sick, nauseous, exhausted, running to the bathroom. This usually only lasts for a day or two. Remember, the bad bacteria in your gut will be dying off when you starve them. They're addicted to sugars and carbohydrates. And mainly what I mean by sugars is going to be the breads, the cereals, the gluten-free things. Those things are going to die off. So you're starving those out. And when they die, sometimes you feel worse instead of better. So you'll have three great soup recipes that you can make. And I suggest you eat that at least, um, you know, if you want to start on a gradient. I always talk about a gradient change of improvement. You start off with a three-day soup diet where you just eat soup for three days. Uh, if you can do it for a week, that'll even be better. And if you can do it for two weeks, that would be amazing. You will change your life when you change your gut. Okay? All right. So remember, your health is your wealth. When you have your health, you have your wealth, and everything will work better in your life. Your job will work better. Your relationships will work better. Your hobbies will work better. Your, everything goes better when you have your health. I know because I played on the other side when I didn't feel good, and I know how that can ruin your life and uh, cause a lot of extra stress. So, all right, until I see you on the next video, uh, make some soup and eat some soup. Thank you.